Hello, my name is Gray. And my name is Crystal. And this is Bust Asian Beauty, the Supernatural Commentary Podcast, where I, someone who has seen this show several times, and I, someone who only knows the show through social media, discuss every single episode of Supernatural from start to finish. Also, we are both Asian. Both Asian! So for today's episode, we will be discussing Season 2, Episode 16, Roadkill. Written by Real Tucker, directed by Charles Beeson. Woo! What a non-episode. Okay, so I know that you think of this episode as extremely boring and like a failed um, yes. horror movie submission. Yes. However, however, I think it's okay. Like, I think it makes some good points. I think there's some things to ponder about on it. It's certainly an episode that's good for like a podcast discussion because there's like meat here that you can pick apart, right? I'm yeah. Right. I would. Yeah. I would agree with you, except uh, regarding the meat. To be to be completely honest with the viewers, I watched this episode once, like three weeks ago. So let's <laughs> see how much I can do that. For context, we have not recorded an episode in three weeks. So Whoa. let's see, let's see, let's see what we're going to do today. I honestly like. I will admit. The first time I watched this episode, I did fall asleep in the middle <laughs> of watching it. <laughs> As you should. Literally, I, w- I was watching it, and it's like two hours before our recording, and I was like, okay, I need to watch it now. And then I put it on, fall asleep, wake up like three hours later, and be like, sorry, Crystal, I missed our schedule, because I literally fell asleep while watching the episode. So, that's fun. Yeah. Jesus. But I think, despite falling asleep on it, it does have some me to it, which let's get into. So, okay, before going into this episode, I would guess that you didn't know anything about this one, except for the line at the end. Yeah, right, I did know about the hope being the whole point line. I guess exactly. I think I had heard beforehand that Roadkill was one of the scarier episodes. Ooh. So I guess I was anticipating more of a horror bent to this one, which I got, but I didn't know anything else. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Let's start. The road so far is your basic road so far. This is how you know that something is uh, fucking... Uh, monster of the week because they do the whole dad wants us to pick up where we left off (laughs) (laughs) which I already have memorized the family business business. and I actually think that line is very significant in this episode like saving people hunting things we start on this highway where a couple is fighting over like the guy not knowing how to read a map and they're lost, and then they do this bit where he's like, I know exactly where we are, we're like at Highway 91, and then like, they zoom in on a, like, a road sign that says like, Highway 41, <laughs> and I thought that was incredibly funny. It but, is. you know, uh, they're, they're like, kind of mad at each other, it's their anniversary, and they need to go to Lake Tahoe, which we saw like, um. a couple episodes back, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, in Croatoan, wow. there was a uh, advertisement for Lake Tahoe or something, right? Or maybe it was a different lake. Now <laughs> yeah, I'm, maybe it's now a different I'm gonna lake. Check. <laughs> but I am learning so much about American geography. Oh, it's for Crater Lake. It was for Crater Lake. So oh. yeah, different lake. Different lake. Sorry, my bad. I am learning nothing from Supernatural. And then they start like... You know, the guy starts teasing her that, like, oh, you're not really mad at me. You love me. And then, like, they start flirting it up. And then Mm -hmm. they crash into a tree. Well, no, they crash. They're about to crash into a person. So the woman who is driving breaks and then crashes into a tree. So, oh, also a detail I missed is all throughout this. 
Oh yeah, all throughout this scene, there's a music playing, which is gonna be important. It's uh-huh. uh, House of the Rising Sun by the Animals, which I know. I also you? know. Yeah. yeah. Is this a famous song? It is a famous song, so I yeah. thought it was kind of funny that they used it as, like, <laughs> a main plot point of this episode. Yeah. Okay, every time they put a famous song in, I'm like, and you couldn't afford Zeb. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, the only reason why I know this song is, I don't think it's famous here, but I do know it because it's in the same album as... We Gotta Get Out of This Place, also by The Animals, which is a song that plays in a later episode that makes me a little bit cuckoo. So I I have listened to that album, which, you know, if you know the scene that I'm talking about, like, it's literally a scene in Supernatural. I have no clue. It's, it's, it's the one where, like, um, Cass is standing on the road, and then Dean is, like, seeing him after Purgatory. Oh my god! Yeah, okay. and, like, the lyrics are, like, we gotta get out of this place if it's the last thing we ever do. And it's like, no! No. But oh yeah, my. I love that song, and I love this album. That's that's my um, fake of the day. Mm. Anyway, that's that's what happens. And then I think we get our splash screen here. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Maybe, maybe not. Who cares? Who cares, you guys? <laughs> <sighs> so, we... Oh, no, it's not the splash scene yet. I think, like, oh, it yeah. goes dark, and, like, I thought it was going to be a splash screen. And then we're still at Molly, and we're still at the tree, and I'm like, something is off about this episode, because we haven't cut to Sam and Dean yet. Yeah. But, like, it makes sense, because I feel like the vibe they were going for in this episode is, what would it feel like if you were one of the people that Sam and Dean are helping, right? Yeah. Like, they purposefully keep you in the dark, Mm -hmm. they're kind of assholes, you look at them and they look like fucking serial killers, like, yeah, that's that's the vibe that they have. That's true. And this this episode does a really good job of showing that, and Mm -hmm. just, it's just, it's sort of boring, because they're not in much of the beginning. That's, like, the only downfall of that part. But I think the execution is good for what it was trying to do. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we cut to still Molly, so you're like, oh, okay, so she's kind of the main of this episode then. Because it's not just, like, she dies and then we go to a case. So, yeah, she's been crashed against a tree. She's in the car alone. And, like, so it seems like David has abandoned her. So Kendall Roy core of him. (laughs) So. Yeah, so she is, like, calling for him. She's kind of injured. And, like, or no, actually, is she not injured? Like, she's surprisingly injured. She has, like, blood on her lip. And then that's it. She's not injured at all. Yeah, she's surprisingly uninjured as she gets out of the car and starts calling out for David and like she's in these like really dark and misty woods it's a creepy vibe and then she sees like a light in the distance and there's a cabin there which is clearly bad news but she goes to it (laughs) anyway and she goes in to ask for help and Inside, she sees, like, standing in the shadows, like, the guy she almost hit with her car. Uh, and she says, like, it's you, you're okay, I'm so sorry. Um, and, but he's turned around, and she can't see this, but, like, his stomach is, like, basically cut open, and you can see his intestines His guts are spilling out. Yeah. And she keeps trying to talk to him, and then he turns around, and he's bloody, and there's blood coming out of his mouth, and his face is, like, rotting or whatever, and she sees his guts, and she screams, and then we get the splash screen. Good. I don't remember this episode at all. Like, at all. No recollection of it at all. But, like, at this moment, I mm-hmm. guessed immediately what the twist was gonna be. Oh. 
Shall we shall we hold off on the twist so like people who also do not remember this episode, which I bet there's a lot of them, also like gets a shock later on. But of, obviously there's gonna be a twist and yeah. you've probably already guessed it. It's a very easy twist to guess. I didn't but guess it's a it twist. until quite late, I think. I oh, thought that the Did you thing... guess it? I thought the did thing was going to be... Did you guess it when Sam be... and her was stalking? No, literally no. no. Oh my god. I, okay. I I just I just kept thinking that the thing would be that like David made a deal with the guy to like let him go and Ooh. like make her be the tortured one, you know? No. Yeah, I didn't know the because the, yeah. they were like, oh, it's like cruel to have her pine after him like this, and they kept saying like, oh, he's alive for sure. So I was like, oh, he's alive because he's a dick. But yeah, oh. no, that wasn't the twist. Yeah, the twist was. Let's cut this out and I'll repeat this joke later. The oh. twist was literally right where you left me by out. <laughs> <laughs> literally. <laughs> Like when when he when she shows up at the door, I was like, oh my god, it's literally right where you left me by out. No, so true. Well, maybe I can put that in, and then like if you know right where you left me, you'll know what it is, and if you mm-hmm. don't, you don't. So true of us. Literally, you have to know Bob Pod lore to understand our podcast. <laughs> You have to have listened to all previous episodes and the Kofi donor. Anyway, uh, we go back to Molly again. So this is the point, I think, where I started being, like, a little bit sleepy. <laughs> like, I was like, why are we still yeah. here? I was like, why where are, we are my here? friends Sam and Dean? <laughs> Literally, I miss Sam and Dean. Who would have thought? Like, never in my life would I have thought to have missed Sam and Dean. But... Uh, she's running through the woods and she goes into the main road and she stops a car. Akin, like much akin to the car stopping from earlier. Mm-hmm. And now the car that she has stopped is black and big and beautiful. <sighs> baby girl, it's baby. So it's Sam yeah. and Dean. I think I literally went like, oh my god, it's Sam and Dean! <laughs> Because <laughs> it had been Sam so Dean. long in the episode, I was like, where the fuck are my friends? Sam rolls down his window and starts talking to this woman. They get out of the car and Molly talks to Sam and Dean about what happened to her. And while she's narrating the story, Dean interrupts her and basically goes like, Oh, the guy that you saw, did he look like he lost a fight with a lawnmower? Mm. Which, if anyone ever said that to me, I would have no idea how to comprehend that, like, at all. Mm. To be fair, I've never seen a lawnmower in my life, so I don't know, like, the implications of that. The only time I've seen a lawnmower in my life is in a Supernatural episode. (laughs) (laughs) And it didn't work, because Dean didn't know how to properly use it. Oh, Which I the, didn't even the know. gin episode. The gin episode, yeah. And I didn't even know that it wasn't working. I didn't know that that was the joke they were making. Because I don't know how lawnmowers work. <sighs> I've never seen one in my fucking life. So, like, I, I think it was years later when, uh, like, I was in the fandom and they were like, he was using a lawnmower that wasn't even turned on. And I was like, oh, really? Never would have guessed. <sighs> Molly is like, oh, how did you know that? And Dean's like, a lucky guess. Dean, all throughout this episode, acts like a very cool guy. (sighs) Cool guy in quotation marks. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, he acts like a cool guy. Yeah. And honestly? Honestly. (laughs) No. No, I don't like where you're going. (laughs) He is a cool guy. I think he's fun this episode. I think he's annoying as shit this episode. Also, given the twist, he's being really mean. Yeah. After the twist, I'm like, okay, this guy's a fucking asshole. But prior to the twist, I was just like, if I was like a, you know, if I was a person who stumbled... Because, again, the vibe of this episode is like, what if you meet Sam and Dean? What would you think of them, right? Yeah. So, like, I I was... that, That thought was... Uh, like at the back of my head and I was thinking like oh if I meet Sam and Dean what would I think of them I would and I leave was like, and die I, <laughs> I literally would leave and die in the woods but uh I I would think I think that Sam is a little bit too much 
like he's like too emo, you know? Really? <laughs> yeah. Huh. And I would think Dean is so cool, but like not the kind of cool that you would want to be friends with. You know, right. like just a guy that you would like to emulate type of guy, which is huh. like the worst thing I've ever said in my life. <laughs> yeah, can't relate. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, but I I support you. Thank you. You know how people say that like trans guys like like Dean Winchester. Like I do yeah. not like that perspective because I think he's misogynistic and I don't uh-huh. think he's like like a good guy to emulate masculinity from. Yeah. But literally trans guys like <laughs> Dean Winchester. <laughs> I just Cass is so, literally yeah. right there. Yeah, I mean, I guess I I get the appeal with Dean is that he tries so hard to perform masculinity that you find that relatable. I feel like Cass is like an example of like how to be a man without being a dick. No, yeah, for real. I think that's very true. I think if you're going to take a guy in Supernatural to be your example of what masculinity what, like, good and healthy masculinity should look like. I think Cass is right there. But, you know. <laughs> yeah. Cass is right so where you left him. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Anyway, we're literally off tangent every two seconds in this episode. Yeah. As we deserve, because we haven't we haven't recorded an episode in three weeks. Also, if we only talked about this episode, then, like, we'd have nothing to talk about, in my opinion. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> like, if we just talk about this episode, it would be so fucking boring. But, uh, Sam and Dean are, you know, obviously nervous mm. uh, talking to this woman, and they're saying, like, oh, we gotta get you back into town, and she's saying, no, I have to find my husband. And she keeps on insisting that, like, I don't want to leave without him. Can you just take me to my car? So, they go to the area where she crashed her car, and it is not there. Yep. She keeps on saying that, oh, you have to believe me, you have to believe me, it was right here, I don't know who would have taken it, it's totaled you, you have to believe me, uh, all that. It's literally indistinguishable woods, like, I would just assume that I misremembered the tree I crashed into. Yeah, because, like, she was insisting about the tree, right? Like, this is the tree I crashed into, and then, I, like, all of these trees look exactly the same. Uh, eventually, we pan to Sam and Dean, who are whispering to each other, and... Sam is saying, like, you have to get out of here. Like, Greeley could show up at any moment in time. And Dean says, what are you going to tell her? Sam says, the truth. And Dean says, he's going to take off running in the other direction. Which, like, (laughs) something so funny to me is at the end of this episode, they call back to this, right? Like, they do, like, a flashback sequence after the reveal of the twist. Yes. And it's literally so long and arduous. And <laughs> oh, it's like, I get... I, I understand how media works. I understand that twists recontextualize past scenes. Like, you don't have to play them for me again. <laughs> like, it ruins the rewatch value of this episode. Because they shove it in your face. Mm-hmm. They, they continue talking to her. And... Uh, Dean tells her that, like, we'll just take you to the cops, right? We'll take you to the station, and then they'll help you, and we'll help you. So, let's go. Yep. So, they're driving, uh, and as they're driving, Molly is talking to Sam and Dean, but Sam's the only one engaging, uh, about, like, how she was supposed to be in Lake Tahoe with David, and it's their five-year anniversary, and then she expresses regret that, like, right before they crashed, they were having a fight. Uh, she says it was the only time we ever really argued when we were stuck in the car, and so So was like, ha, I know how that goes, and Dean, like, glares at him. Yeah, literally. Yes, yeah, so true. It's it's quite funny. Yeah, and then Molly goes. Molly is like, 
really upset because she says, like, the last thing I ever said to him is that, like, I called him a jerk. And, like, what if, like, that is the last thing I ever said to him? And That's okay. not even a bad thing to yeah, tell someone. Yeah, it's not even a You're bad a thing. You're a jerk. Yeah, yeah it's not like, bad. Yeah, like, it was clearly, like, a joke. Yeah, they were, like, they, they were, were just like playing around, around as point. he like yeah. tried to have sex with her while she was driving the car. So honestly, they <laughs> tried to give her this. a road head. <laughs> <laughs> Misha Gallitz would be proud. Oh my god! But should we explain that? <laughs> oh, Cause I, sure. Because I mean, yeah. Great, no, great calls like, road food the show that Misha Collins does Roadhead because it's funny. Yeah, and we are not saying that Misha Collins has ever endorsed or done Roadhead, so that's our disclaimer for this episode. <laughs> what I thought the back then was like, wouldn't it be so funny if what? the last words she ever said to him was like, jerk, and then he like got offended and just said like, bitch, and then they <laughs> crushed him to the tree. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Literally. Like, the intensity, the gravitas of those two words are so different. <laughs> like, it would just be so fucking hilarious. <laughs> yeah. It's like, jerk, and I'm like, what the fuck? You bitch! <laughs> like, <laughs> literally. God, sorry, just remember that post that was like, Happy International Women's Day to every woman that Dean has called a bitch. This includes Sam. <laughs> this includes Sam and also Molly. Like, I feel like he was like murmuring bitch under his breath oh, the, this entire episode. Definitely later when they recap the case, like off screen, he calls her a bitch like every other sentence. Yeah. So Sam goes like, Molly, we're gonna figure out what happened to your husband. I promise. And then the radio starts, like, sputtering, and then it starts playing House of the Rising Sun, baby! Which is, I think it's a very good mood-setting piece. Yeah! Like, it's very gloomy and Honestly, ominous. Honestly, like, I, I watched this episode last night, right? Yeah. So it's been, like, 24 hours for mm-hmm. me. But right now, like, just thinking about this scene is giving me the creeps that I'm compelled to look behind me to see if there's anyone. Oh, my God. Like, it, it's quite a creepy... Like, this song makes it creepy, I feel like. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a good... It has good creep factor, this episode. Also, just the fact that I feel like people generally view themselves as control in control of their machinery, like their car and their radio, so just the concept of that being controlled by a ghost is is creepy. creepy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, because like, they're like locked in this car, and it's like, you feel like you're supposed to be safe, but you're not. Ooh. <laughs> or whatever. Ooh. Yeah. Um, so they get scared, because none of them actually turned the radio to that station. And then Molly says, this is the song that was playing when we crashed. Uh, and then the radio crackles, and then we get, like, the voice of Greeley, the, the lawnmower fight guy. And he says, like, again and again, like, she's mine, she's mine, she's mine. And then he appears in the road, and Dean fucking pedal to the metal, baby. Accelerates, yeah. Hit the hit the metal. He- what that hit the pedal heavy metal? <laughs> like that song know. from like One Direction. <laughs> I don't know Literally. this song from One Direction. I think everyone should know every song from One Direction, like I do. <laughs> every song? Every song. <laughs> How? Don't they have, like, I, a lot? Yeah. I was a fan when I was in sixth grade. Yeah. Oh, I was, uh, I was an edgy anti-One Direction person in sixth grade. <laughs> I was, like, a fan in sixth grade, and then... I, I don't know why I worded it like that. I continued to be a fan for a very long time. <laughs> yeah. But, like, I wasn't 
um, I wasn't particularly... Like, I was that kind of person that was like, you know, like, I tell people like, oh, I like One Direction, and then they start talking about the members, and I'm like, oh, I just like their music. Like, I was uh-huh. that person. I was probably annoying as fuck to everyone. But I, I mean, really did like their music. I like boy band music. Yeah, okay. So brave of you to not engage with the Larrys. I, I, I just wasn't online. I think that's just a problem. Like, I just didn't have, like, Tumblr or social media or anything. Mm. I mean, that's good. You would have gotten yeah. caught up in conspiracy theories about how one of them has a fake baby. <laughs> It's so funny because, like, I also liked Five Seconds of Summer. Obviously, uh-huh. like, I'm I'm literally that person. But um, one time I was talking to a friend, and they said to me like their first exposure to gay people was accidentally reading no. uh, Five Sus Guy X Five Sus Guy Fic on Wattpad, and I was like, that's literally like I would not know what to do with my life if that if that was my first experience of gay people. <laughs> like I literally do not know. So like, thank God that my first thank experience God. with gay people is like meeting a lesbian in my dormitory at like age thirteen. Mm-hmm. So true of me. So true of you. God, what? What? Okay, tangent. What's yeah. your first experience? With fan fiction, I found I, the first fic I ever read was in a Goodreads forum. <laughs> so true of you. Yep, yep. That's that's very that's that's such a such a niche thing. I feel like, but like it's nice. Goodreads forum, good place to find your first fan fic. Yep. Yeah, I, mine was I, in Ao3. I was like, Wait, AO3? I was already quite old. Yeah, I was already quite old when I started reading fan fiction. Wow. Yeah. No, so. I think I went from Goodreads to like FF dot net slash just like random like Google sites hosted fix. Yeah. Um. Oh, and some live journal, and then I eventually moved to Ao3. Yeah, Ao3 for me was already thriving when I started reading. I think I started reading yeah. fic at like 2017. Mm. Yeah, that's so it's like late. it's a, it's actually already established. Yeah, and guess who? <laughs> guess who my first fanfic reading experience was about? Was it Destiel? It was Destiel. <laughs> so true of you. <laughs> Literally, so true of me. At yeah. least my first experience of gay people was Destiel <laughs> and not Five Sauce Guy X Five Sauce Guy. <laughs> yeah. What's the first gay fan fiction I ever read? It was probably for Balthazar and Peter from the web series Nothing Much to Do, which is an adaptation of Shakespeare's Much Ado About Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. Yeah. Also, okay, I think I said I went from Goodreads to FF.net and LiveJournal, but no. I don't think I read any fic on LiveJournal until, like, after I'd been reading on AO3 for a while, because I had my house MD phase, and because it's an old fandom, I had to read a lot of the fic on LiveJournal. Oh. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. If it's an old fandom, right. you read it somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. I gotta say, I did not encounter any particularly quality fic on live journal, but <laughs> I did read a lot. It's, it's so funny. One of the first fics I ever read was 91 Whiskey. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I made a friend read it. A friend who was, like, not into Supernatural at all. I, mm. I was like, I told her, like, oh, you should read this fic that I read. Like, you don't need to know anything about the show to care about it. Uh-huh. And she was like, okay. And then I sent her the link and she was like, 400,000 words? What are you doing? And then she read it in three days. So true. So, so true. And then she messaged me that, like, I'm literally crying right now after reading this thing. <laughs> this is not a promotion of 91 Whiskey. I do not remember anything about it at all. But yeah, it's that kind of thing. Mm hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Let's, so let's what were we talking episode. about? So what are we what are we on about? Um oh yeah, he floors it and he drives through Greeley. 
And Molly's like, what the fuck just happened? And Sam's like, don't worry, Molly. Everything's gonna be all right. <laughs> but then the, <laughs> the car Molly, starts yes, sputtering. Yeah. It starts sputtering. It can't move anymore. Um, And Dean can't start it again. And he's like, ah, shit. I don't think he's gonna let us leave. Dun, dun, dun. So they get out of the car and they're standing around. And um, he opens the trunk. Dean. Dean does. He Mm -hmm. opens the trunk. And this is, I think, the clearest that we have seen the trunk so far. Right? Mm Mm-hmm. And I don't really have any comments on the particular contents of the trunk. But I really like the fact that in this scene, we so clearly see that he uses a rifle to prop it up. Oh, I think yeah. that's really fun. I think that's Ugh. really fun. But yeah, he uses a rifle to prop up the trunk, and Molly sees this and yes. goes, Holy shit, I'm going to die. <laughs> I'm literally going to die. These men are gonna kill me. They're serial killers. They have all these knives and guns. I'm going to fucking die. So yep. he starts like, walking backwards mm. and it's like oh, okay i i think i got it from here i'll just go to the cops by myself thank yep. you so much i'll find my way out <laughs> and then like sam sam specifically starts walking up to her mm-hmm. all menacingly like i mean all I get that, like, six foot two of him. literally six foot four right six foot four? Oh yeah no yeah. that's him. okay yeah jesus christ but like it's so terrifying. This scene, I was genuinely terrified. Like, I know that they're not, you know, serial killers yeah. of that kind. But, like, <laughs> literally, run for your fucking life, Molly. It's scary. What they do is scary. Like, the, the way this was framed, and also, like, a lot of the cinematography this episode lends to the vibe of yeah. it being creepy. And I love that. And the fog. The fog does a lot. Molly is just like going like, leave me alone. Go away. Mm-hmm. And then Sam says like, it wasn't a coincidence that we found you, okay? And this is the most to menacing be like a- sentence ever. <laughs> like, the way Sam says it is it's supposed to be like the moment where Molly goes, oh, okay. Like... <laughs> I trust you now, but it's literally the creepiest thing that's ever been said in all of Supernatural. Like, what the fuck, dude? And then, you know, Molly... At this point, I don't know how she's staying, but, like, yeah. at this point, I would run. Yeah. I'd be like, okay, so you were trying to find me and kill me. I'm just gonna go run into a tree myself. That'll be an okay way to go. And then... Dean says like, you were just cruising for chicks when we ran into you, sister. <laughs> We've made this joke before, but literally, so James gay best Charles friend of him. <laughs> It's so gay best friend of him. He could totally be the gay best friend side in like a final girl horror movie, you know? Um, you know, freaky. Um, I watched it with my ex-fiance last week, but it's, yeah. um, Catherine, shit, what's her name? The Claire actress. What's her full name? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I don't know her full name, but it's her, yeah. Yeah, but it's like a Freaky Friday thing where, like, she switches bodies. she have body- a gay B- BF? Yeah, she switches bodies with a serial killer, and Dean could totally be her gay best friend in that one. <laughs> I like the Jeff sets that I've seen of that uh, movie. She's like bloody and shit. Yeah. Love that. I mean, it's kind of trashy, but like, it's fun. Who cares? Yeah. We're supernatural fans. Yeah. And a lot of plot holes, but who cares? We're supernatural fans. Dean says we're just, we're not cruising for Chick's sister. <laughs> <laughs> says like we were already out here hunting and then she goes hunting for what literally i would die on the spot 
Dean says like ghosts, and Sam is, like goes don't fucking sugarcoat it for her, <laughs> which like like in retrospect that's so fucking funny. <laughs> 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 And I'm amazed that they didn't put it in the flashbacks. <laughs> that would be funny. <laughs> Literally, I think they didn't put it because it's like too comedic to be yeah. put in there. And they were going for a like, whoa, it's me type of flashback sequence. Yeah. Okay, I feel like at this point, people people know the twist from what we're saying, right? Can we just talk like we like they know the twist already? No. Okay, sure. Fine. Okay, the twist uh, is the that twist Molly's is... also a ghost. Yeah, she's a ghost, too. So Yeah. I mean, it's, it's very obvious. I feel like maybe because I've seen it before and then I'm, I'm accessing, like, a part of my brain that has seen it, mm-hmm. that does remember it, you know? So, like, at this point, it was, like, super obvious that she is already dead and is a ghost. Mm-hmm. But, like, <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> Yeah, it seems like we're out here yeah. killing you. And so I'm like, can, can you chill? Sam, like, uh, explains that, you know, they think the guy is named Jonah Greeley, and then he died 15 years ago. Which I didn't comprehend that 15 years ago was like 1990 something. Right. I was like, oh, so like in 2007? Cool. <laughs> No, like, I thought, like, 15 years ago was, like, <laughs> this is so stupid. I thought 15 years ago meant, like, he died in, like, 1950 or something. <laughs> like, my brain just automatically went there. Because later on, we see pictures of this guy. And right. I was, like, in shock that the pictures would look so recent. Like, why is there color in this picture? It's yeah, like, like, why is he wearing he from a trucker times? Hat? Literally, why is he not from the 1950s? <laughs> If he didn't fight in World War II, then there's no way he died 15 years ago. Okay, Sam says one night a year, on the anniversary of this guy's death, he haunts the road that he died on. And that's why they're there, which is to try to stop him. Mm. So, okay, I'm quite unclear on the lore. Okay. So people have other people have died on this road because they crashed. Yeah. Okay. So other people crash on the road, or other people survive the crash and say that like they almost crashed into a lady, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Because later on they say that like Greeley was torturing a person every year, and that person was always you. was you. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I I was so confused. I was like, if they're torturing a ghost, like, isn't that like more okay for like Sam and Dean than if they were torturing like humans? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, so I didn't comprehend that the other people were also dying. <laughs> no, I think if it was just the ghost thing, Dean would be like, it's a closed loop. Like, whatever. Who cares? Let the ghosts do their yeah. thing. Literally. And Sam would be like, she deserves to be put to rest, Dean. <laughs> or, like, some shit. And then we'd get a whole scene about it. She's still uh, suspicious about this. But Sam and Dean are, you know, quite convincing. At some point, she says, like, you're serious about this. And Dean says, deadly. <laughs> and I was like, God, you're fucking corny. You're a fucking asshole. I want to fuck you so bad. It makes you look No! Stupid. Shut up! <laughs> Molly asks about her husband, uh, but Sam evades the question and says, like, before we can help you, you have to help us. And then they go to the cabin that Molly was in I gotta say that this, like, all the cryptic shit, and then Sam being like, first you have to help us. Like, this seems like an intro to a really bad porn, you know? No! It literally does, though. (laughs) No, I have not seen a lot of pornography in my life that has an intro this complex. <laughs> Fair Literally, enough. That would be that would be so Wait, funny. Would be so funny, funny though, if, it was, if this, this is like like the whole t- fifteen minutes, and then it cuts to her sucking his dick. Literally, that would be so funny, and it's still the same ending. Like she's still a ghost. He was getting that good 
Lucy. <laughs> God. No. But yeah, I mean, I guess it's it's good that this wasn't a porn intro because this seems a bit manipulative. <laughs> so. Yeah, so she okay. leads them back to the cabin. Where, okay. She leads them back to the cabin where, like, we saw Greeley. And uh, Dean says that this is probably his hunting cabin. Um, and there's, like, a bunch of, like, tools and blood around. And Dean was like, well, he sure seems like a sweet guy. Which is, like, that that line kind of confused me. Because do you think Dean is anti, like, animal hunting? I... Because these are just the tools that you use at, for animal hunting, I feel like. Okay, but... Okay, I think... Didn't he say that that guy who did animal testing in a lab was, like, automatically was, like, an asshole? evil? Yeah. Oh, Dean <laughs> Winchester is against killing animals, but, pro, like, pro-killing, like, quote-unquote monsters that are often very close to human and, like, sentient and can talk to you. All right, Literally. Dean. All right, all right, bro. And he makes fun God. of Sam for being vegetarian. <laughs> it's only okay to eat meat if it's killed in a slaughterhouse on a factory farm. <laughs> That's the insane. The thing is, I didn't, because it was dark, I couldn't tell that it was blood on the table until I read the transcript. I thought it was like, like, like he spilled like honey all over the table, so I thought the sweet guy thing was a pun. But yeah, no. <laughs> that, that's incredibly funny. <laughs> yep, so uh, they can't, they don't see any like gravestones outside. Um, and Sam explains to Molly that, like, they're looking for his corpse so they can salt and burn it to get rid of the spirit. And Molly says, like, oh, and that'll save David. And Sam's like, well, it'll help both of you. Um, so we find out that after Greeley died, his wife took the body. Um, so she probably brought him back here, but they never saw her again. Um, and also they owned a thousand acres of land. I didn't know people were allowed to own a thousand acres of land. That's a lot of land. What's yeah. a thousand acres? Uh, yeah, let me try to convert it to... Is it square miles or square kilometers that would be No, I think, um... What? No, there's there's another term that we use. Hector? Hector? Oh, Hector, I don't, Hector, I don't know how to how to pronounce it. Um, okay. four hundred four Hector. Oh my God, that's a lot. So, Why? Why do they have this much land? I guess to farm on. <laughs> I mean, okay. do they? I feel like it's like, do they have any other employees? Like, I don't think that this guy alone and his wife can like, toil have, like yeah. four hundred four hectares of land. Yeah, right. Like, aren't like it's weird that they don't have any mentioned employees. So <laughs> we need the full backstory of the Greeley family. <laughs> yeah, I mean this episode is thirty nine minutes long. They could have done it exactly, and they had that long ass <laughs> flashback <laughs> sequence. Like they were really gunning it for the time. Yeah. So. Molly goes like, so this is really what you guys do? You're like Ghostbusters? When did Ghostbusters come out? I was like, is that too modern of a reference for her to be making given her death date? Oh! Okay, let's look up. When did the Oh, it's from 1984. Never mind. It's like really <laughs> old. It's like old as shit. Okay, cool. <laughs> well. Uh, great. Right. Cool. <laughs> Okay, so, um, yeah, and so it goes, yeah, and Dean says, minus the jumpsuit, um, and then, like, he's being such a dick, he's like, this is a fascinating conversation at all, but this highway's only haunted once a year, and we got till sun up to wrap this thing up, and he's like, okay, let's move it along, okay, great. What an asshole! What an asshole. Yeah, so... They're, like, going outside, and Sam explains that they're looking for Greeley's house, so he might be buried there. 
Um, and then she hears, like, this whispered voice, which is, like, clearly not good news, going, like, Molly? Molly, help me! Molly? And, like, she fucking turns away from Sam instead of being, like, hey, Sam, I hear a sound. She just goes, like, OMG, David? And she, like, goes running towards the voice, and then obviously Greeley appears and, like, starts attacking her. Like, duh, Molly. <laughs> yeah, sorry for being unsympathetic. I'm sure that sucked and you're worried about your husband. But also, like, bro, <laughs> like, you should be aware by now that you're in a horror movie. Like, get with the you're program. You're literally in a horror movie. You're literally with some guys who are claiming to be ghost hunters. It's like... Yeah, uh, so Dean shows up with, like, his gun and he points it at Greeley and he says, whoops, and then shoots him in the head because Dean thinks he's so cool. He's literally, he literally thinks he's so cool. Like, he said that whoops, and he thought, wow, just like in the movie. Exactly. Like, he literally thought that. Yeah. Um, and then Sam, like, is like, hey, are you okay? And Molly starts freaking out about, like, what the fuck did this guy do to my husband? She calls him a son of a bitch. Yes. <laughs> All right, girl. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I love it when women also exhibit misogynistic traits. <laughs> Literally, equality. Literally. But, like, for supernatural, equality means both men and women can be misogynistic. For so long, the misogyny profession has been male-dominated, but this new <laughs> diversity, equity, and inclusion program will ensure that women, too, can be misogynistic. So true. Yeah, so... God, I can't believe I'm saying this, and I say bitch like 20 times per podcast episode. <laughs> I think we only say it when... Okay, here's a fun fact. The very first episode, they do a bitch jerk line, right? Yeah. I... And also prior to that, Dean calls the ghost what a bitch, yeah. right? And when you said that, I literally flinched. Like, uh -huh. because I never say bitch in real life. Uh huh. Like, this is a podcast exclusive, me saying bitch. <laughs> I, I have, like, I probably have never said the word bitch prior to this podcast. Huh. So, <laughs> like, saying it in the podcast, like, the fact that you said it and, like, the way you said it was like you were quoting him. So you yeah. said, what a bitch. <laughs> yeah. I was, I literally was like, uh, uh, uh. Oh my god. <laughs> I, I need to say bitch in the podcast so that Crystal doesn't think I'm uncool. No! <laughs> no! No, you don't have to say bitch. <laughs> oh. It's fine. Like, we're, a lot of the times we're just quoting Dean, mostly. Like, Sam barely says bitch at this point. Yeah. So. Yeah. I also do say bitch on my own, but mostly to refer to men. <laughs> That's equality. <laughs> that is equality. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Sam says, like, take it easy, all right? You're gonna see David again. You will. Sam, I mean, you're not wrong, but this is kind of mean of you, too. Like, they were like, what, it, what is so wrong that she's finding for him? And Dean, Sam is out here being like, you'll see him. You'll see yeah, him. Don't worry. Like, you'll be with him forever yeah, and ever. Yeah, like, he'll love you. Sam. Like, he loves you. Like, you'll, you'll go back and he won't be remarried. So... You won't be right where you left me <laughs> by out, Dean. God... So they see, like, some, like, creepy brick road, and they decide to follow it, and, uh, while they do that, Molly asks about the things shooting rock salt, and Sam explains the lore and stuff, which, I don't know, I feel like- He says- Yeah, simple remedies are always the best in most cultures. In most <laughs> cultures! Most and not all! Yes! Salt we should have started- theory. Like, uh, most cultures count, like, a tally. Yeah, we should have we should have made a count of Sam saying most all or whatever culture. Mm -hmm. Like, unfortunately, it's a little bit too late. Because, mm -hmm. like, the first time it happened, we didn't think it would happen so much. Yeah. But he literally says, like, most cultures, all cultures. Or, yeah. 
like, all societies or whatever the fuck. Yeah, every that culture, one like okay. <laughs> all right, free law. <laughs> Literally free law major. Yeah. Um, I don't, I feel like. It makes sense that Molly is asking all these questions, but I just... I feel like this would have worked as an earlier seasons episode so that they can use it for exposition. Like, here, it's like, what's the point? Like, we know. Yeah. This is like a season one episode vibe. Yeah. Especially given the fact that in season one, they're looking for John. Yeah. The whole hope is kind of the whole point thing. Yeah. Would have hit a little bit harder. Because, like, you know, they think John is dead, but they're hoping he's not. Mm-hmm. And that hope is the whole point. Yeah. So I I really feel like this would have fit in well with season one. Right. Yeah. But alas, Rael Tucker alas. did not have her horror movie script rejected yeah. until <laughs> season two. Uh-huh. So, and they see a house... And uh, I guess it's creepy because Dean says, you know, just once I'd like to round the corner and see a nice house. (laughs) Okay, Dean. So Sam and Molly enter the house, right? And this is, this, the cinematic choice, the like, um, the cinematography choice in this scene, I really like. So Sam and Molly enter the house and it takes Dean like maybe 30 seconds, maybe a little bit more to enter. But because of the way they framed the scene, he you don't see that it's him. It's just a shadow, and it like mm-hmm. it re- it's really creepy. You probably don't even remember this because it's been three weeks for you. <laughs> but like I I vividly remember this scene, and only when he enters the room and he starts speaking does the camera move, and I really like that. Mm. So yeah, that's my compliment to Charles Beeson mm-hmm. today. Anyway, uh, Sam asks if there's any headstones outside, and Dean's like, oh, it's never that easy, is it? And uh, he makes Sam and Molly check upstairs for any clues on where the um, headstone or the grave is, and he's gonna check downstairs. So we go to Sam and Molly. And I must say, this episode is a Sam episode. Yeah. And I love that, because usually when we get the Sam episode, it's, like, for the plot. Mm-hmm. We rarely get a Sam episode that's just for Sam. Like, not, not like, for the plot or for, like, the bigger picture. It's just a contained story that also happens to focus on Sam. Right. And this episode is that episode for this season, and I, I think maybe that's a part of, a big part of why I enjoy it. Yeah. I guess since I just saw this as a Molly episode, I didn't focus as much on the Sam character development. But yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Anyway, what happens here is Molly finds a scrapbook of um, the Greeley family. So Mr. Greeley and his wife. Mm -hmm. It's just the two of them. And it's a scrapbook of all their like moments together them buying the house buying the land at some point they see a love letter which Mm -hmm. i didn't really get a closer look at the love letter i paused and zoomed in but like i didn't end up transcribing it because it seems like too much work but i think it, it has something that's like oh like i was walking outside today and i saw the moon and it reminded me of you and like Something like I don't. I, it was like written better, but you know, just like you're so beautiful and you make me so happy, and like you know, it's Aww. just very sweet. Aww. Yeah. Well, uh, so Molly says like, "This is so beautiful. I don't understand how someone who can write a love letter like this can turn into a fucking monster." Mm. And then. Sam does his, like, little exposition where he says that some spirits, they're, like, wounded animals, right? Yeah. And they're in so much pain that they lash out. And all I was thinking of was, like, this is literally Dean. Like, this is literally Dean. Huh. <laughs> Dean may as well be a ghost. Yeah. And then Molly asks, like, why are they here anyway? And Sam says it's because something's feathering them here. So it can be, like, a physical object. 
or it could be unfinished business like revenge or love or hate or all of those things. They hold on too tight. They can't let go. So they're trapped, caught in the same loops, replaying the same tragedies over and over. Just like Literally supernatural. 17. Literally supernatural. Because uh, like... Uh, <laughs> It's literally supernatural. At this point in the show, right? Mm -hmm. Let's just think about it from at this point in the show instead of like the entire thing. At this point in the show, there's nothing really... Like, I I know Sam is about to get murderous, right? Like, that's the fear right now. Yeah. But like, a little bit earlier in the season, for Sam, there's no reason for him to stay in the job anymore. Yeah. Like, the whole point of the second episode of this season was uh, the whole, like, I I don't want to do, like, I want to keep on doing the thing just because I owe it to dad. Yeah. Right? Like, I think this is what dad would have wanted. Mm Mm-hmm. And I think this is kind of what that was referencing. Like, it could be revenge for John, or it could be love for John, or hatred for John. Mm Mm-hmm. But... Sam, like, held on too tight for that. And now he's trapped. Like, now he can't get out. And he will not get out for 14 more years. God. (laughs) Well, he gets out for one year. And then... And then they make sure he feels really bad about it. (laughs) Yeah. They make sure... They they make him apologize for it, like... Yeah, he says, like, it's the worst thing he's ever did or whatever. Like, seriously? It It was like... It was like season 13 or like season 14 and he goes to Dean and it's like, Dean, remember Purgatory? And it's like literally Sorry no for not does. looking for like you even though it, was, it was made, it seemed very much like you'd just die. <laughs> yeah, it's been six seasons, bro. Nobody remembers. And yeah, you guys yeah, get so it's... concussed. It's a wonder that you remember. <laughs> literally. But yeah. So, yeah, they're caught in the same loops. They're playing the same tragedies over and over. And Molly says, like, you sound almost sorry for them. Sam says, there aren't evil people. A lot of them were good. Just something happened to them. Something they, they couldn't control. Oh, and Dean comes Sam. In. It's so, he's yeah. so Sam. Oh, my God. <sighs> He's literally, oh, oh, he's such a guy. Yeah. He's literally such a guy. <laughs> What's, you know that joke they, where they say, like, category five woman or something? Oh, like, yeah. Sam is literally a category five guy. Yeah. At this point, Dean walks in and he's like, A fucking well, dick. I'm different from Sam. Like, me? I don't like ghosts. And I ain't making apologies for them. Uh, that's it, that's that for that, or something like that. Yeah. And he's, like, such a fucking asshole, especially in retrospect. Uh Like, this is the point in the episode where I was sure, like, when Sam was doing his little speech, I was positive that she's a ghost. Like, 100% sure. Mm. So Dean coming in here and be like, I don't have any sympathy or empathy for ghosts at all, knowing full well that this woman is probably 100% going to be a ghost. Yeah, It's like... Dean, Dean, you're an asshole. You're you're a terrible person. Yeah. Okay, so Dean starts uh battling it out with the wall. He finds a little passage, but it's locked, so he kicks it in. And honestly, he looks so cool. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> stop it. <laughs> Literally stop it, Gray. This is not your heart. <laughs> but he does look very cool. Like, he stands... And he's, he stands with his back to it and kicks it backwards with his foot. And it looks looks pretty cool. Oh my Good god, just like a horse. <laughs> <laughs> no one will get that joke because we I delete it every single time we make it. Yeah. I can we hint at it? Okay, so like okay, you you do the hinting, yeah. Um I, is this too obvious? Okay, I think a lot of people like to make jokes about jackals being like a lame horse, and you know what we do with lame horses. <laughs> <laughs> Every single time, like, Jensen Ackles acts a certain way in this, 
show, we make that lame horse joke. And then we cut it out because because it goes on Spotify's terms of service. (laughs) Spotify is gonna nerf us, you guys. Yeah, but we didn't put put the last part of the joke, but you guys know, right? (laughs) You guys know. You guys know. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, the door opens. And they crawl in, and inside they find uh, the body of, the, like, remains, like, skeletal remains, almost, of Mm -hmm. this woman. And we know it's a woman because the hair is long. Uh, At this point, like, I'm not too clear on what rotting is like. Yeah. Yeah. Right, like, why is she just a skeleton? Like, okay, she's just a skeleton, but she's still hanging up. Uh-huh. Oh, by the way, they see her, like, she's, like, a noose around her neck, right? Yeah. So she's she's still tied up, and she's just there. Like, she has not fallen apart in any way. Is that how bodies work? I have no clue. I also have no clue. Thankfully, I probably never... Oh, no, that's a lie, because I am maybe taking up law. So maybe I do need to know at some point what bodies look like after Are the competition. Are you going to do, like, murder law? That sucks. Murder law. It's called criminal law. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Well, I'm <laughs> not free law. law, so how would I know? <laughs> no, no, I... I... I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know if I'm taking up law. So let's let's save the um let's save the fucking um career crisis for another episode. <laughs> but at some point, Dean says like it smells like old lady in here, uh-huh. and then he opens the door and there's a lady hanging on the ceiling, and he's like, "Well, I figured," mm-hmm. <laughs> and I thought it was also funny. Molly like says concludes that the reason why she hang herself is because she didn't want to live without her husband. Mm. So Sam goes up to the body and starts cutting out the rope. Mm -hmm. And Dean is like shocked and upset that he would do this. Sam says like, we can't just leave her here. And Dean's like, why not? (sighs) Dean, you're a terrible guy. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I get Dean not wanting to help because I don't want to touch a corpse that bad either. But, like, he doesn't have to be a... He could could at least be, like, Sam's, like, doing a good, nice thing here. Yeah. And also, they literally opened a casket once that they thought had, like, a fresh body in it. Yeah. So... I don't know. He's just being an asshole, honestly. Though, honestly... If I was Sam, I probably would have salted and burned her, like, in case. I also would have salted and burned her. Yeah. We don't know. Like, maybe she's a ghost running around, too. Anyway, uh, Sam says the whole line, like, she deserves to be put to rest. Which is, you know, premonitions or whatever for future plot twists. They go out, dig a grave, put her in there. By her, I mean the corpse Mm -hmm. and molly starts asking about the afterlife yeah and this is when i was like ding 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 this is that episode this is the one with the hope is the whole point episode oh yeah because they would never bring this up for any other reason Mm -hmm. (laughs) is there any other time in supernatural where the afterlife is given this much like credence or i love credence like this much attention other than the whole like there's heaven and hell or I think I guess at that point they already know that there's heaven and hell right so they don't really care that much about it uh huh but at this point they were like who knows they know that hell exists though cause Dean's all like I'm gonna yeah. send you demons back to hell and Meg was like I was sent to hell yeah, John and John is sucked. literally in and hell and John is literally yeah. there <laughs> John is literally in hell. Good for him. I mean, yeah. So, maybe they just don't want to tell this ghost that, like, you may be going to hell, right. but we don't know for sure. But 
we also don't know for sure if there is even a heaven. So, right. tough luck. Like, I don't think she wants to hear that. Mm-hmm. She asks, like, what happens to all these people that you put to rest? And Dean says, lady. <laughs> God. He says, lady. That answer is way beyond our pay grade. So, uh, Molly says, like, oh, so you haunt these things, but you don't know what happens to them? And Dean says, well, they never come back, and that's all that matters. What a dick. <laughs> yeah. Sam says they just go. After they let go of whatever they're letting, of whatever they're holding on to, they just go. So he says, like, I hope they go someplace better, but the reality is we just don't know. And then Molly asks, like, what about the burning of the bones? Okay, here's a question that I have. Cremation burns the body but not the bones. That shit you have to grind up. Yeah. So what does burning of the bones actually do? Oh. Like, like physically. Not like metaphysically. Like, just physically. Oh, yeah. Like, does it even do anything, do anything to the bones? Like, they put kerosene on it to burn it and they put salt in it. So like, is the salting and then the burning the whole process of purifying it? Yeah. Or I think that's so, like, if you just cream, like, it doesn't make sense because also just cremating it invalidates the whole ghost argument, right? Um. Well, okay. So, in cases where they were like the body was cremated, then they're like, ah, oh, damn, we can't salt and burn the bones, so there must be like an object that they're holding on to or a different part of their body that's out there like the like hair on the doll or whatever right yeah no what i'm asking is uh-huh. is the soul thing the thing that purifies the bones all oh, right so you're saying that since there's no salting in cremation then why would that why would that disqualify the the body yeah like what if like what okay here's my theory right mm-hmm. so cremation mm-hmm and then they grind up the bones, and then there's the ashes, right? Yeah. If you mix salt into the ashes, like, what happens? Oh, right. Is that, like, <laughs> that ends it? Like, you close the loop? Yeah, literally. Yeah, but, like, I don't know. This is, this entire thing is honestly, like, so stupid when you think about it. Yeah, yeah but uh, she also asked that. Like, what the fuck does salting and burning even do? Sam says... Dad used to tell me that it was like death for ghosts, but we also don't know. So, <laughs> Whoa. and then he says, "Guess that's why we all ho- we." He says, "Guess that's why we hold on to life so hard, even the dead. We're all just scared of the unknown." Yeah. Oh, that line makes me so sad in the context of, like, them knowing everything about heaven and hell and the future, and I feel like also being yeah. more suicidal. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, guys. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, my dudes. Yeah. Molly basically says after this that, like, the only thing that she's scared of is losing David. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> He literally left you, and you are literally right where he left you. <laughs> I wonder what he did, like, during the actual time of the crash, right? Like, she wakes up alone, but did she, did he actually abandon her? I mean, I hope not. Yeah, me too. Or should I hope that he did? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I guess he probably would have, like, called 911 and stayed by her side as yeah. the ambulance came. I hope Did they did. even have phones back in 2000? Oh. No, back in 1992? Oh, uh, there's a cell phone. When, when was the first? It's just a telephone. First cell phone. The first publicly available cell phone was released to the market in 1983. So yeah, we're okay. Boo! My research said, and by research I mean the first thing that pops up on my Google uh-huh. results was 1973. Oh. So one of us is lying. <laughs> one of us is wrong. <laughs> one of us tells only lies and one of us tells only the truth. Now answer these riddles three to cross through the door. 
Literally. So, yeah. Okay, the thing is, the whole, like, driving force of, like, Molly in this episode is, like, like, she can't, like, let go because she loves David so much, right? And were they, like, convincing to you in the f- in the first scene? I mean... No. Yeah, I wrote down, <laughs> they are Not so boring. <laughs> yeah. I think that's what I makes this episode okay. so weak for so, me. Yeah, because she's like, I need to see... My husband. I love him so much. I'm like, you guys are just like, like, you guys give me like friends with benefits vibes, you know? Like, (laughs) that's who you are to me. What's, um, what do you think is something that a couple could do in a car at the beginning of an episode? Like, for that duration of time as well, that could convince you that they mean much to each other? I feel like more inside jokes. But, but, like, that amount of time, like, you wouldn't have enough context to explain it, so the audience wouldn't really appreciate it, I feel like. Yeah. It's just, I feel like it's a difficult thing to do. Mm-hmm. Right. Especially because they're driving. Yeah. I feel like maybe Especially it because started with them in, pulled in the over on the side of the road, and, like, I don't know, like, having, like, a conversation or cuddling in the back seat for a bit, and then they started <laughs> driving again. <laughs> I feel like it might have worked better, but also, like, I'm such a fan fiction reader, so who even knows? Cuddling in the backseat, you're literally a fan fiction reader. No one ever cuddles in the backseat ever. Do you I know think Cass deserves is? to be cuddled in a backseat, and I will make that like, everything's problem. The, this car is the type of car that already has seat belts in it. Like this is this is the type of car that, like they already passed into law that you need to have seat belts when they made this car. You know what I, I mean? I don't think seat belts so, prevent like, you from doing that. You just don't have to have them on. No, I mean like what I'm trying to say is like cuddling in the back seat is very painful because of the 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 fucking. Um, what's that? You can push them Seat down. Belt, like, you can push them down. Even then, even then, you can't lie down on a car and be like, this is the most comfort I've ever experienced. Oh, I meant, like, like sitting anymore. cuddling. Ugh. Okay, fine. <laughs> Do whatever you want. <laughs> I support you. Thanks. I miss Cass. Yeah, I okay. What do you do? You think there's anything they could have done to be convincing besides not be so fucking boring? I genuinely don't know. Maybe like a little more. Like maybe if they weren't, like it, is it essential that they were fighting? Yeah, I don't think it matters that much that like she called him a jerk before they crashed. Like yeah. that, like that guilt doesn't seem like a big through line for her character. Like, maybe a scene where they're driving, right? Mm. And then, like, the guy is sleeping or something. Yeah. And she, like... Like, what makes them crash is she's, like, trying to, like... She, like, removes her jacket and puts it over him or something. Oh. And then they crash. You're <laughs> such a fan fiction the reader, road. too. <laughs> <laughs> It's cute. It this is, is not cute. fan fiction material. This is K drama material. I've oh, watched okay, okay. a shit ton of K drama in my life, and this is the sh- kind of shit that they do. All right. I think I've literally seen a K drama where like they cr- they <laughs> she crashes because um she's like trying to pick up like a phone that like she's talking with a guy over it. Oh my god. <laughs> literally, so true. <laughs> so true. Yeah. So. Yeah, so, uh, they're still in the house, and, like, Molly's looking through the photo album, Sam and Dean are having a whispered conversation, he's like, I think we should tell her about her husband, and Dean's like, we can't, and Sam says it's cruel letting her pine for him like this, I don't like keeping her in the dark, um, and Dean says, like, it's for her own good. 
And he says, like... What an asshole! Okay. Like, you have not cared about her own good this entire episode, Dean. Yeah. And now you're like, it benefits me, so it's for her own good. Yeah. Fuck you. And he says, like, I know you feel guilty, but let's just stick to the plan. We'll get her out of here, and then we'll tell her. And... Obviously, Molly overhears because they're like literally in the next room over talking about her, and she's like, "Tell literally, me what? There are no walls separating them and Molly. Yeah, like <laughs> maybe go behind a wall, you guys. Yeah. Also, you have phones. Like you can text. You can have your secret conversations by typing and like." You know when you're, like, having secret conversations with your friends and you just type in the notes app and show it to them and then they add to it? Literally. What? This, this, this reminds me of an anecdote I have, which is that one time my, my, I was sitting in the back seat with my aunt uh-huh. and my mom is in the front seat. And she's texting my mom. Uh-huh. And then I literally said out loud for the entire car to hear, uh-huh. why are you texting my mom? You can just tell her things, like, right now. And my tita and my mom started laughing so hard. And my tita told me, like, you know, you should not, like, if you notice things like that, you shouldn't say them out loud. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> literally ruined their secret conversation. So Sorry, true. Mom and Tita. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Molly goes like, what aren't you telling me? It's about David, you know what happened to him? And Sam seems like he's about to tell her, and Dean's like, Sam, don't. And Molly says, don't what? Don't tell me because I'll mess up your hunt? You don't care about me or my husband. So fucking That's real. That's the sound of me clapping. So fucking Literally, real. I'm clapping. Go, Wally. Go, Wally. Literally, she doesn't... They don't care about you or your husband. They just care about the hunt. Which is... This is what I was saying earlier when I said that the saving people hunting things thing comes up this episode mm-hmm. in a substantial way. Like, this is someone that they are trying to help. Sort and of. obviously, she's a ghost. Uh-huh. So, like, they evade it in a way. But at this point... You're not really supposed to know that yeah. yet. So you just think that there's this person and she they're using her for bait mm-hmm. and keeping the truth from her. Yeah. And then she brings this up and you have the thought, yeah, they're hunting things but not they're not really helping the people. Yeah. So mm. what day? <laughs> and I understand okay, here's the thing, right? Like I understand that it's a job. Like at the end of the day, it's a job mm-hmm. for that. I feel like there's there's a difference, right? Yeah. Like if you're a service worker, you can be an asshole to your <laughs> to your customers. Like it's fine. Yeah. But like if you're literally saving their lives, like don't be an asshole. I don't know. Maybe, right? Yeah. Maybe no. This... Like being an asshole cashier is fine. Being an asshole nurse is not. Yeah. Like being an asshole doctor is like the worst profession to be an asshole in right mm. so so and like this is kind of like the vibe of that yeah you're hiding things from this person because it serves your interest like that's not cool mm-hmm. oh speaking of hiding things to serve your interest have you read that article about how some people fake alzheimer's research results Oh, uh, no, I haven't. Can I link it in the description of this podcast? I think everyone should read it. Okay. It's a very well-written article. <laughs> what a weird thing to say. <laughs> so far in this episode, we're promoting um, Alzheimer's research fraud. So, yeah. Um, yeah, and while he's like... Okay, Sam says, like, that's not true. We do care about you. And, you know, Sam's probably not lying when he says that, at least. <laughs> yeah. And Molly says, like, really? Then whatever it is, tell me, please. And Sam says, like, he might. But then we hear a radio turn on and we hear House of the Rising Sun, baby. Oh, <laughs> It's so fun that this ghost has, like, a calling card and it's, like, this gloomy song. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, so Dean tells Sam to stay with Molly, um, and he finds the radio that the song is playing from, but, like, it's, like, the power cord isn't working, so 
you know, like this scene is so funny because it's it's less of a radio and more of like a jukebox, right? Uh huh. Like it's very big at the very least. Yeah. And like he picks up the frayed wire, yeah. And it's like it lingers on it for yeah, so long. Yeah, it's like we get it. Like, it's a ghost. Like we, creepy things like, are afoot. We get it. We get it. You get it. Like this doesn't. Like you don't even need to show that it's unplugged. Like it literally does not matter yeah. whether it's plugged or not. Like it, the ghost is still coming. Uh huh. I mean, it's just like I was so aware at this point that this episode is just thirty nine minutes long, and then they're like doing this to yeah. extend the duration of the uh-huh. episode. Right. Um. And then like, so the front door, like, there's like glass and like. It like fogs up, and then like the and then like the words like "she's mine" appear. Like, is it? Does it look like they're being written by a finger, or do they just show up? Mm, I don't remember. No, they just show up. Okay, yeah, yeah. It's the... Um, and then so Molly and Sam are in a room. Um, and Sam's like sort of like guarding, but Molly's standing by the window, and then Greeley crashes through the window and grabs her and drags her outside. Uh, and Sam is all useless, and he's just telling Dean, like, oh, they got her! And then they, like, go and no. chase. You, I mean, okay, uh-huh. maybe you still haven't realized that she's a ghost at this point, right? Yeah. The reason why he's hesitant to shoot is because oh, if he shoots, it's like she'll disappear he's also going to disappear. Yeah. Oh, okay. I get it. Okay. Never mind. Sam, I'm sorry for being mean to you. You've never done anything wrong. <laughs> so, so Dean is like, oh, this guy's fucking persistent. And Sam is saying they got to find Molly. Dean is saying, no, we have to find the bones. Which is like, whoa, Uh distinction between the overall. (laughs) It's so stupid. Why are we watching Supernatural? Like, I'm positive there are so many other good shows out there. Like, I could be watching Breaking Bad right now. (laughs) I love that that's the first one you go to. (laughs) No, because I've been tempted to watch Better Call Saul recently. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Maybe I should watch Breaking Bad first. So I have been watching Breaking Bad. Oh, okay. But I'm I'm getting kind of bored. So maybe I should just go straight to Better Call Saul. Mm. Wait, but is Jesse anyway. Pinkman even in like Better Call Saul? I don't know. I don't know. I don't think so because yeah. it's a prequel. The point of Breaking yeah. Bad and is that you're like Jesse waiting Pinkman. for Jesse to get his top surgery, right? Like that's the plot. A breaking bad. <laughs> like apparently from Tumblr that is the plot of Breaking <laughs> yeah. Bad. Yeah. And as we know, feminist women love Jesse Pinkman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wait, isn't there like I a line in the wiki agree. that says that like he's never said the word bitch for a woman? <laughs> or something. So true of him. Good for him. Yeah. He's just like me for real. He's just like me for real. And uh, so Sam ends up looking at the the photo book, the uh, scrapbook that Molly was looking through right right before the conversation that they had. Mm-hmm. And uh, Sam reads the the caption in one of the photographs, and it says February sixth, nineteen ninety two, which was two weeks before the incident. So Sam says, like, this is in front of the hunting cabin, but a while ago when we went there. There was a tree on the spot that they're standing on right now. Mm-hmm. And Sam is like, I should have fucking thought of it. And he's like, oh, what? And Sam is like, oh, it's like, in, it's an old country custom. Like, you plant a tree as a grave marker. And Dean is like, man, you're so fucking weird. <laughs> oh, stop he's like, weird. you're a walking encyclopedia of weirdness. Sam's so, so and, smart um, and my favorite little guy. Like, get over yourself, Dean. Yeah. And uh, Sam is like, yeah, I I know. (laughs) And then they pick up their bags and they walk out. And they eventually get to the hunting cabin. But before that, we see Molly getting tortured by Mr. Greeley. Okay, sorry to cut in on Molly getting tortured and hating women. (laughs) But, like, 
Okay, so Sam says, yeah, I know, but, like, he seems kind of, like, bitter about it, right? Off, but, yeah. yeah. And, like, is it because he's, like, mad at, like, Dean for, like, saying something mean, or is it that he resents that he knows all this stuff because he probably had to, like, read books about the supernatural from, like, age 10 or whatever? I think it's just, like, a rolling your eyes at someone who's calling you smart. Fair. For no... Like, you know, shit kind of shit. Yeah. I don't think he's, like, resentful that he knows this thing. Because, you know, they're helpful. Yeah. It's helpful that he knows these things. Yeah. He's just annoyed at Dean for, like, constantly being like, Oh, you figured something out? Okay, you smart boy. <laughs> like, you know. Like, yeah. Come on, Dean. Wait, what's the... What did he call... What did he call Sam and Scarecrow? The dorky? The whatever... Remember, like, he had a I have no very idea. fun insult. Oh, yeah, no, sorry. In Scarecrow, he calls Sam his trusty sidekick geek boy. <laughs> Woo! He's literally a trusty geek boy, but I refuse he's not to a say sidekick. he's a sidekick. He's a trusty protagonist That's... geek boy. Yeah, um, okay, I think that... Okay, for the torture scene, I think that some of the dialogue is important. Um, like, the oh, whole yeah. time, like, Molly's asking, like, where David is, even though, like, she's literally being tortured so bad. Um, and, oh, and Molly says, I didn't do anything to you. And Greeley seems offended oh, no. at this. <laughs> and then she, <laughs> yeah, which, you know, I understand that. And... <laughs> She says, like, I know about your wife. Hurting me won't bring her back. And he says, my wife is gone. All I have left is hurting you. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. And then that's when yeah. Sam and Dean, like, Honestly, approach the cabin. Oh, yeah. But they don't save her for a while because they're dicks. <laughs> Honestly, this whole thing, like, gr- What's his name? Really? Yeah, what a name. He He's a very corny ghost. Yeah. He's, like, so fucking corny. Because he's so concrete, I guess. Mm. Like, they did the thing where it's, like, telekinesis, right? Like, he controls things from a distance. But because he's so solid, it's like, ugh. This is just a guy. This yeah, is this is just, just an a actor. guy. And he's being, like, such a dick. <laughs> he's not scary. Because, like... Like I've said, I like the creepy factor of this episode, but the moment he actually shows up for an extended amount of time, that creepiness fully disappears. Mm. Yeah. Agreed. He's a loser. So yeah, Sam and Dean show up, and they literally see her getting tortured. Like, yeah. <laughs> they can hear her screaming from the cabin. And Sam says, like, Go get Molly to Dean, which is kind of a stupid, right? Like, like go get Molly, Sam. Dean hates yeah, this woman. Like, Dean is not going to prioritize her safety. But Sam starts digging around the tree, and eventually he finds the bones. Yeah, uh, yeah. Molly does this thing. Uh, Dean does this thing where he walks in and shoots Greeley, and then. Molly says, thank God. And Dean says, you can call me Dean. Oh, God, I fucking hated that. <laughs> He's such a fucking dick. Like, she's being tortured. Like, shut up. Literally, what are you doing, bro? This is when his cool factor ran out. Like, he's not cool anymore. I do not he want to suck his dick cool. so bad it makes me look stupid anymore. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, Greeley, like, keeps on appearing, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, Sam is outside, he's burning the bones, and then Greeley bursts into flames in the wackiest effect that they've done in a while. He, like, starts walking backwards, and uh, his bones are, like, fucking burning. Mm. Yeah. Yep. And then he disappears, and then he dies. And that's it. Yep. So... They go back to the Impala, and they, like, pats it, and he's like, oh, baby, it's been a long night. Like, okay, Dean, like, not in front of other people, bro. He's literally coming home to his wife. Like, <laughs> this is what's happening here. 
<laughs> yeah. Um. So, yeah, they get Molly in the car, and Sam says, let's get you out of here, and she says that she's not going to go anywhere until you tell her what happened to David. Um, and she says, like, all this time I've been looking for him, and you knew that Greeley killed him, didn't you? He's dead. And Sam says, like, no, like, he's alive, like, for realsies, I promise, and I'll take you to him. And, like, she's so happy. And, like, Sam, you're not helping. <laughs> like, you should tell you're her this before you get there. What What did you think was happening at this point, then? I still thought that it was, like, a David made a deal to abandon her and have her be tortured in place of him. I guess. God. So I was like, okay. yeah, like, he's gonna take Molly over and David's gonna be like, what? You're alive? I mean, um, that's great. Hi. <laughs> like, or whatever, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Molly would feel all betrayed and shit and then they'd, like, leave and I'd be like, that was a weird episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So, yeah, they, like, show up in front of, like, this nice house um, and Sam's like, he's in there! And Molly's like, I don't understand. And Sam says, you will. Okay, dude. <laughs> Please give her some yeah. warning. <laughs> she walks towards the door. Towards the window, actually. And she sees this guy who looks like her husband, but of course 15 years older. And she's like, what's happening? Why is he suddenly a hag? You're like, <laughs> it's, it's just been a few, it's literally just been a night. Why is he literally so old? And then um, the, the, the guy, uh, what's his name? David. David. <laughs> they literally say it a hundred times this episode and I still don't remember. But uh, David is drinking coffee when suddenly a woman walks in and gives him a kiss. Mm. And Molly's like, oh, I'm scandalized. What is this? Yeah. Who is that? And then she turns to Sam and Dean. And Sam says, that's David's wife. It's been 15 years since you and your husband hit Jonna Greeley with your car. And only David survived. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. And then um, Dean says, like, there are two spirits hunting Highway 41. John Greeley and you. Okay, so Sam says, like, for the past 15 years, you've been appearing every anniversary of your death on that highway, right? Mm. And Molly is like, no, no, no. But our anniversary, February 22nd. And Sam says, like, 1992. And Dean, Dean goes, Molly, it's 2007. <laughs> this is so fucking corny. <laughs> and then... <laughs> you know <laughs> Dean has been <laughs> waiting for this reveal. Dean's so fucking psyched for this. He's like, Molly, why aren't you gasping and clapping at this twist? I've been practicing, like, how to deliver this line. Dean literally was like, Molly, it's 2007. And then he whips out like a fucking projector and projects the, <laughs> the flashback scene <laughs> from the projector to like baby's windshield. And they made Molly sit in the back and be like, oh my god, like, what? where that did you have time to record all of my reactions to everything that you just said? What the fuck, dude? But yeah, basically what happened is, you know, they crashed into Greeley, killed him, and then Molly just didn't survive, and then she's being tortured by Greeley every single year mm -hmm. since 1992. Yeah, so we get these flashbacks now. Um, yeah. Right, so we see like that before this whole thing happened... Like, they were investigating Highway 41 for a case because apparently a lot of people crashed here. Um, and they all happened on February 22nd. 
and each year witnesses say that what they saw that made them crash is that a woman appears in the middle of the road and she's being chased by a man covered in blood. So yeah, it's two ghosts and they're doing research and then they go and interview David to ask about where Molly's buried, but it says what she says he says that she was cremated. Um and like then like like Molly flashes back to the crash or something. And then like yeah. Sam says some spirits only see what they want. And then we get like the Sam and Dean, like, POV of, like, when they run into Molly, and, like, inside the car, Sam's going, like, Dean, I don't think she knows she's dead, before, like, they open up. And then, this is where they just start, like, playing, like, they, these aren't even new scenes, these are just old scenes. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, ooh, these are recontextualized now. Guys, look how smart we are. Oh my god, I'm Rail Tucker. <laughs> it's so corny. Yeah. So there's this. It's so funny too. Wait, there's a line in the transcript where Molly is like, Stop, stop, Imbala breaks. Dean yells, holy. And then it proceeds to Molly's line. So it's like, holy moly. That's uh, funny. Yeah. And that's the only entertaining thing about this scene. The rest of it is just goofy as shit. Uh-huh. So corny. I literally, like, this is supposed to be an emotional scene. And I was laughing out loud <laughs> while it was happening. The one thing that I think this made me, the, the one thing about this that made me like the episode more was me realizing, like, oh, I thought Molly the actress was kind of bad because she talked weird, but she's just from olden times. That's just how people talk. <laughs> she's just from 1950. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, like, just scenes where, like, Sam's like, oh, I'm gonna tell her the truth, and Dean's like, she's gonna take off running, and where Sam says, like, some spirits hold on too tight, like, whatever, blah, I don't care. And, yeah, and Molly yeah. asks about Greeley, and Sam says each year he punishes somebody for his death, chasing them, torturing them, and each year, that somebody is you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, and, yeah, and apparently Molly couldn't remember any of it because she couldn't see the truth. And Molly's like, oh, so that's why he won't let me off, because I killed him. I killed us both. And the scene yeah. ends on that, and it's like, we knew that already, like, you didn't have to say it again. <laughs> yeah. Like, the fact that it ends on that, like, it's a big reveal, like, whatever, like, I got it. But now, it's, like, morning, and Molly is sitting outside with Sam and Dean. And she asks, like, why didn't you tell me when we first saw each other? And Sam and Dean say, you wouldn't have believed us. And then she tells Dean, like, and you needed me for base. So fucking says, true. Well, we needed you. <laughs> Okay, Sam. In oh, order for we need us you, to I help need you. you. For bait. <laughs> yeah, for bait. In order for us to help you, you have to help us first. We need you. For bait. For bait. <laughs> Molly is like saying, like, I need to see David again. I need to talk to him again. And Sam says, so what? You can tell him that you love him and that you're sorry. He already knows. Mm. And then he says, like, if you want to go in there, we're not going to stop you. And Dean says, yeah, but you're going to freak him out, like, for life. <laughs> this actually made me quite sad, because, mm. like, the whole point of, like, oh, we haven't even brought up the right where you left me joke, <laughs> which oh. we promised we will bring up. Damn. Like, the whole context of, like, you know, he has already moved on with his life, and she's still stuck yeah. in the moment right after it happened. She's literally right where you left her. Yeah. So, yeah. Makes me sad. Mm. This actually got, like, an emotional response out of me. Oh. But not not too much of an emotional response. Yeah. I think I, <laughs> I was more dramatic. emotional about Sam saying that, like, 
he already knows that, like, you're, you love him yeah. and you're sorry. Because it's like, oh, like, it's kind of all futile. Oof. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And then Sam says, finally, like, he already said his goodbyes. Now, it's your turn. This is your unfinished business. Sam says, like, all you need to do is just to let go. And then Molly says, like, but go where? Mm -hmm. You don't even know where I'm supposed to go to. But Sam says, like, it doesn't matter. Like, you don't belong here. Haven't you suffered long enough? It's time to go. (laughs) What? (laughs) And then she walks into the light. (laughs) Yeah, okay, this looks goofy as shit. (laughs) They literally made her walk into the light. (laughs) I just, okay, like, between this and Houses of the Holy, right? They're like, oh, like, for the nice ghosts, we're gonna have them, like, have, like, nice deaths instead of burning. But they just look goofy (laughs) as shit. (laughs) It's so corny, too, because it's so extended. Mm -hmm. Again, they were, they were buying time at this point. (laughs) Like, (laughs) they literally, she walks into the light for, like, 45 whole seconds or something. Yeah. Yeah. And, it's so corny. It looks so bad. Mm. Um, do you think that if she refused, like, sh- she'd wake up and forget that this whole conversation with Sam and Dane had happened, and, like, it'd just be February 22nd again next year? But, like, Greeley won't be around to torture her again. So, wait, so she literally would be fine. <laughs> she literally would be fine, but... I mean, like, she'd I be sad because like- she'd find David, and it'd be like, oh, he's married. <laughs> Yeah, but also, is, isn't it possible for her to go invisible? Right. I don't... Like, yeah. just watch David. <laughs> just be a creep. Yeah, just be a David creep. From, like, afar. <laughs> they got rid of Greeley. Like, it's like, you suffered enough. You suffered enough because every time you woke up, you got tortured. Like, that's not a problem anymore. Like, just let her yeah. chill out in the car. <laughs> Yeah, maybe you can tag her along and have, like, a ghost friend to help you with your ghost hunts. Um, wait, do we think she disappears at sunrise every, like, February 23rd, though? Oh, interesting. But, like... So they did not solve this case at all. Right. (laughs) So, I guess... It is exactly sunrise. Yeah. But I guess, like, the implication is that this time she's disappearing for good... They don't yeah. know that though. <laughs> they literally Maybe don't she know just that. like walked into the light and it looked cool, but she was just like having a moment and then like she's gonna wake up again <laughs> next year. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like like they would they couldn't do this given the scope of supernatural, but I would have liked to see this concept as like a time loop episode where each time they try to convince her to let go and they're like a year older each time or something, you know? And it's, like, from Molly's point of view, so it just seems like the same day over and over again. Yeah, I don't think they can do that, yeah. but they do do mass mystery spots. Yeah, they so do do like mystery spots. a little spot. bit of a hint of that there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, so, yeah. Dean says, I guess she wasn't so bad for a ghost. Like, die. <laughs> die, Dean. Dean, you were a ghost. I guess he doesn't remember, though, right? Yeah, he doesn't remember his ghost endeavors. Yeah, but Sam does. Like, they, like, Ouija board communicated. Yeah. And Sam probably told him, right? Yeah, like, he you did. Were a fucking ghost. Yeah. Oh, uh, well. Right, and Dean asks, like, do you think she's really going to a better place? And Sam says, I hope so. And Dean says, I guess we'll never know. Not until we take the plunge ourselves, huh? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, and Sam says, Sam says, the line. He says, it doesn't really matter, Dean. Hope's kind of the whole point. Uh, <laughs> and then they um, go through the Impala and the episode ends. Yep. Crystal. Yeah. 
What did you think about this episode? Uh, while watching it, I was very bored. But I think that as an episode to discuss is, like, fun. Because there's some yeah. meat in there. Yeah. You're literally just copying what I, I said. I know. <laughs> I know. I'm, okay. okay. It's because Quoting right, Grey. Quoting and... Grey. Yes. As you said, <laughs> that is true. Because you are right. I literally was right. This, I think this is a pretty solid episode of Bad Pod. <laughs> Supernatural, not so much. <laughs> it's fun to make fun of, but it also has good bits that are actually genuinely good. Mm-hmm. So yeah. yeah. Best line, worst line. I'll start with my best okay. line. And it's not the same as yours. My best line is, uh, you just care about your hunt. You don't care about me or my husband. Mm, delicious. That one really got to me. I was like, ooh, yeah, they just care about the hunt. Ugh. Yeah. No, the thing is, actually, that my line is also not Hope's kind of the whole point. Okay. I think it, it's a really iconic Sam line, but I think in context about it being specifically about the afterlife, it's, like, not as impactful for me. Because I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, Sam's just a sad boy. <laughs> 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 He is sad. Like, when he, they were walking back to the car, I was like, oh, he's literally so fucking sad, yeah. bro. Like, he's literally so sad. And I was still thinking that thing where I was like, if I, like, met the Winchester brothers, mm-hmm. like, what would I think of them? And I was like, I still would probably think Dean is, like, funny and cool. And I would still think Sam is, like, a depressed <laughs> loser. <laughs> no! <laughs> Okay, well, the Sam's mo- okay. Sam's most fun, like depressed loser, pathetic moment. I think was when he was in the attic because the way they were doing the sound, like his breathing was kind of loud, and he like just sounded like he had a cold or a stuffy nose the whole oh, time. Oh yeah, he he literally did sound like he had a cold. Yeah, and I I, I made a, like a uh, uh uh what do you call that? I made a note uh-huh. about that scene that was like. Does Jared Padalecki have... Was Jared Padalecki sick this episode? Yeah. But, like, immediately after, his voice turns back to normal. Right. So I don't think it's... Yeah, yeah. no, but he sounded very pathetic and wet, like, during that part, so I appreciated that. Yeah, okay, my Mm -hmm. best line is actually the um, spirits, like, really are, like, wounded animals lost in so much pain that they lash out. Um, And also later when he says, like... Whatever it is, they just hold on too tight, can't let go, so they're trapped, caught in the same loops, replaying the same tragedies over and over. And I also like the part where later he says, like, they weren't evil people, you know. A lot of them were good, just something happened to them, something they couldn't control. Because I don't, like, I mean, I really like the idea of ghosts as wounded animals. Like, it's, like, a good way to, like, like, contextualize, like, why they hurt people in a way that's like like that makes you sympathetic and yeah yeah, that's reasonable right it's like it's like you know acknowledging the trauma that they've gone through it's like at at that point like they've been through so much pain that like the id supersedes anything else Mm -hmm. like that's the kind of the like vibe that it has yeah yeah the like the animalistic instincts take off and, like, stay the most prominent mm-hmm. out of all the characteristics that they have. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. It's up there with, like, the concept of, like, a haunted place being an open wound mm. that Misery said once. Yeah, yeah, like, right, yeah, like, sick. yeah. Making, making these, uh, you know, supernatural beings and phenomena feel organic mm-hmm. is a good way to go, I feel like. Yeah. Like, when they said hell was, like, a... Uh, Bit made of meat and uh-huh. bones. Like, yeah, that's also fucking great. Yeah. Like, it evokes something very um, organic. Yeah. And it, it feels, like, disgusting, but also, like, it feels concrete, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Yeah, and then I liked the rest of it because, you know, like we, like we mentioned, a lot of parallels to Supernatural in general. Yeah, that's true. For my worst line, I would say when Dean said, like, this is a fascinating conversation and all, but this highway's only hunted once a year, and we got till sunup to wrap this thing up. 
Why do you say we move it along, okay? Like, great. Okay, and like, shut up. Fuck you, dude. Shut up. Oh, fuck you. Fuck off. Yeah. What's your worst line? Um, when Dean, like, shows up and he's like, Sammy's always getting a little J. Love Hewitt when it comes to things like this. Me, I don't like him, like, meaning ghosts, and I sure as hell I ain't making apologies for him. Like, you're such a dick, Dean. You're such a dick. This, this ghost is obviously in so much pain, mm-hmm. right? So much distress. And she doesn't even know that she's a ghost. And she has never tried to intentionally kill anyone. Yeah. Like, all the fatalities that happened in this street during February 22nd were not on purpose from her de- department. Yeah. Like, it was, they were all legitimately accidents. Mm-hmm. Why are you so mad at her? Yeah. <laughs> you just show up and you're like, I don't like you, by the way. Like, I hate your guts. Like, shut up, Dean. Okay. I am deviating. Huh. I feel like this one is gonna be low because it's not relevant to the plot at all. Yeah, and also, like, And also, it's like, watching it is not, like I said, like, it's not a particularly good supernatural watching experience. Mm-hmm. And but... I also feel like people won't like the twist that much. They'll either be like, that was super obvious, or they'll be like, that was super corny, you know? Yeah. So what what did you give it? God, it's been so long. Um, seven point nine. Seven point nine. You know what? I'll go for an eight point one. Okay. Let's see. So it is. <gasps> is it like high? You want to guess again? You want to guess again? Just guess again. Eight point four. It's an eight point. What? Okay, so people liked it. Okay, that's good. I think that's pretty good. I don't think it's an 8.8. Like, I don't think Houses of the Holy getting a 7.9 and this getting an 8.8 is reasonable. I would say this is more of an 8.5 episode. Hmm. Yeah, I'd say it's more But, like, I'm glad that people liked it. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Good for them. Brilliant ep. Uh, classic Supernatural, one of the all-time best episodes. So far, the best episode of the second season. Those are the positive reviews. One negative review is, the twist, once revealed, makes the episode stilted. Which, I think, is the result of the fucking <laughs> flashback. flashback sequence. Because it was so fucking bad. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. This one says, like, classic Supernatural. After waiting a month to satisfy my Supernatural cravings. Why? They they spent a month <laughs> before releasing this episode? Uh, Here's another gem by Rail Tucker, who also wrote the very creepy Bugs oh, Scarecrow. No! She didn't even write Bugs. Did she even write Scarecrow? I don't think she wrote Scarecrow at fucking all. Yeah, John Chaban wrote Scarecrow, and those yeah. two one-off randos wrote Bugs. What is this person on? <laughs> Oh, okay. So the woman is from Battlestar Galactica. Oh. Okay, yeah. That makes people, sense. That's why people yeah, like her. People like when they recognize an actor. She has a familiar face. I think... Um, apparently she was in a Key and Peele sketch. <laughs> Maybe that's where I recognize her. Mm. I do love Key and Peele. I think they're fucking hilarious. And it's so wild to me that Jordan Peele, like, uh-huh. turned from, like, absolute comedy icon to, like, one of the best horror directors of our time. Yeah. <laughs> like, good I, for him. Okay, I, Honestly, good I for will him. say a controversial statement, though, which is that I watched... You don't like- no, that I watched Nope in theaters on Friday, like, on the release day, because I was excited oh. about it, and I didn't like it. I still haven't seen it. I just saw um, Us and... Um, yeah, no, his other movies are great. Get out. Yeah, big agree, but nope, did not Although do Although I it would for say me. there is a decline in quality from Get Out to Us. Mm-hmm. I think Get Out is much more, like, so much better than Us. But, like, Us is still pretty good. Okay, cool. I never watched Us because I'm a scaredy cat, but Get Out was really good. It's creepy. It's genuinely creepy. Like, the creep factor in that one is... 
I know I said that the creep factor in this episode is good, but like if you really want the creep factor episode, go watch us or something. Mm. Okay, that's it for this episode of Bus Station Beauties. Next week, we will be discussing season two episode. What episode is this? Seventeen mm-hmm. Heart. Yep. Leave us a rating or review wherever you get your podcasts. Follow us on social media. We are on Twitter at twitter.com slash beautiespodcast and on Tumblr at bustyasianbeautiespod.tumblr.com. Our official tag is badpod, B-A-B-pod, and thanks to everyone who's donated to our Kofi at ko-fi.com slash bustyasianbeautiespod. You can email us any feedback, comments, or inquiries at bustyasianbeautiespod at gmail.com. See you guys next time. Bye. Bye.